Hello world, Liu here, and today we will discuss 9 things I never knew about strings in Python until recent years. Number 1, raw strings. So here, let's just define a S is equals to R and followed by the quotes. And so let's just add hello world first. So here, the R in front of the quotes will denote that this is actually a raw string. And the thing about raw string is that the backslash character will be treated like an actual backslash character. So hello world, let's say new line and uh, apple. So if we print S, and if we run this, we will get hello world backslash n apple. So notice that our backslash n is not treated like a new line character. However, if we remove the r, it will be treated like a new line character. And that's why we have the new line character here. So once again, if we add the r back, our backslash character here will be treated as an actual backslash character. So here, raw strings are pretty useful when we are doing regex. I import regex and I want to write a regex is equals to, so let's say I want to match stuff that has apple inside. So apple and this. So here, a backslash w means a word character. But if we are using a normal string, we have to have a double backslash in order to make this work. So if we don't want to deal with this, we can just use a single backslash character and we add our r in front to signify that this is a raw string. So once again, if we print regex, we will get the actual backslash characters as they are. Number two, f strings. So first, let's create a name is Tom and the h is equals to 30. And next, I'm going to create an f string which stands for formatted string. So S is equals to F followed by the quotes. So here, my name is name and my H is H. So here, notice that I use curly braces to denote that this should be a variable. And here, this will just take whatever value of the variable that I pass in. So this will be Tom and H will be 30. And so if I print S, I will get my name is Tom and my age is 30. So here we can do more cool things with f strings too. So f string again, and we have this and this. So let's say name and I put an equals, and after here, h I put a equals. And if we print this, we will get name is equals to Tom and h is equals to 30. So this is printed this way because of the equal signs after our f string which can be useful if we are debugging. So another cool thing that we can do with formatted strings is that we can round off numbers to the nearest decimal place. So for example, let's say I have pi is equals to 3.14159 and let's say I want to print an f string, pi is pi. So if I print this normally, I'm just going to get 3.14159. However, if I add a colon, a dot and a 2f, I'll round this off to two decimal places. So if I rerun this, I'll get pi is 3.14. So there are many other cool things that we can do with f strings, but I won't cover all of them here. Number three, formatting strings using percentage. So here, let's say I define a string first. So my name is percentage s for string, and my age is percentage d for digit. So let's say we print string percentage followed by a name and an age. So let's say Tom and 40. And if we run this, we'll get my name is Tom and my age is 40. So what's happening is that Tom, which is the first variable in our tuple, is assigned to the first percentage sign that we see here. And next, age, which is the second variable in the tuple, is assigned to the second percentage thing here. So this string is useful as a template string if we have multiple values of name and age. For example, let's say we have something like this. We have Tom 20, Jerry 30, and Spike 40. And for name, age in data, and let's format our strings. So string, percentage, and followed by name, comma, age. And if we run this, we'll get the following output. So my name is Tom and my age is 20, my name is Jerry and my age is 30, and my name is Spike and my age is 40. 
So one thing to note is that the number of things in the tuple must be equal to the number of templates over here. So if we try something like this, we will get an error. Number four, dot partition. So let's say we have a string is equals to apple, orange, pear without space. And if we do this, we print string dot partition orange. So let's run this and let's see what happens. So here we have apple, we have orange, and we have pear. So what's happening is that the string is kind of being split by orange. So we look for orange and we split it here. So the left side will come here. Whatever we split by will come here and the right side will be here. So in a way, it's an extended split function. So split by orange. So here, notice that the split method does not give us orange in any way, but the partition method does. So here, the partition method can be useful as an alternative to the split method if we also want the thing that we use to split the string. Number five, triple coated strings. So if you have worked with Python for some time, I'm sure you have seen something like this. So S equals to triple code and followed by a closing triple code. So we have apple, orange, pear, pineapple, durian. And if we print this string here, we will get this output in the same format as we put it here. So here in a triple coded string, whatever new line character that we add in is in fact treated like a new line character. So let's say I add more stuff here. Hi, ha ha ha. And if we print this, we'll get the exact same thing here. So notice that the number of spaces that we add here is exactly the same as whatever I've written here. So here, a triple coded string can be useful if you do not wish to use new line characters again and again in your normal strings. And you can even draw stuff like this. Number six, split lines. So let's say we have a paragraph of stuff. And let's use a triple coated string. So apple, orange, pear, pineapple, durian. And next, let's print s dot split lines. And if we run this, we will get apple, orange, pear, pineapple, and durian. So what's happening is that split lines will look for the new line characters and it will split by these new line characters. So every line in our string will actually be an element in the resultant list. So let's say I have apple pie, orange juice, pear cake, pineapple tart, durian cake. So if I run this, notice that apple pie, which is on one line, is actually one element in the resultant list. So similarly, orange juice, which is simply one line here, is also one element in the resultant list. So this method can be useful if you have large strings spanning multiple lines and you wish to split them into sentences. Number seven, various Boolean string methods. So let's start with is alpha. So let's print apple dot is alpha. So is alpha will actually check for whether everything is an alphabet. So if everything is an alphabet, this is true. However, if we change one of the things to a non-alphabet, let's say let's change e to three, this will become false. Next, let's talk about is numeric. So one two three is numeric. So is numeric will return true if everything inside the string is a number. So if I run this, it will be true. But if I give it something else, like let's say one two a. This will return a false. Next, let's talk about alphanumeric. So one, two, three, a, b, c, dot is l num. So the is l num method will return true if everything inside is alphanumeric, meaning that it is either an alphabet or a number. However, if I have even one character that is not alphanumeric, let's say a space, this will return false. And here we are gonna get true and false. And next, let's talk about is lower. So let's say apple is lower. So this will return true if every single letter inside the string is lowercase. However, if even one letter is in uppercase, we will get false. And if we run this, we will get true and false. And similarly, let's talk about is upper. So apple dot is upper. And let's make this lowercase. So here, is upper will return true 
if every single letter inside our string is uppercase. However, if even one letter is not uppercase, it return a false. So if we run this, we will still get a true and false. So there are actually quite a couple more such methods, but I won't go through all of them. But do note that these methods can be useful if you want to do some string validations. Number eight, special escape characters. So I'm going to start off by doing this print backslash a. And if I run this, notice that you have just heard a sound. So that is what this character is doing. It will print a bell sound for you. So let's say I make this run every half a second. While true dot time and time dot sleep 0 0.5. And let's run this. So here, notice that when I print backslash a, which is the bell character, I will actually make a sound. So next, let's move on to backslash b. So I'm going to print a, b, c, d, e, f, g, and I'm going to print backslash b, backslash b, and I'm going to print x, x, x. And if I run this, I'm going to get a, b, c, d, e, x, x, x. So you might add, so here you might notice that f and g are missing. And that is because the backslash b character is actually the backspace character. So what's happening is that f and g has been deleted by the two backspace characters that come after them. And number nine, aligning strings, which allow us to print our own tables. So here I'm going to print this first. And in the middle, we are going to add this thing, apple.ljus20. So what's happening is that this will create a string of length 20. And apple will be on the left side of this, and the rest of the string will be padded with white space. So let's run this, and we'll get this. So here, this string is created, and it has a length of 20. And notice that apple is on the absolute left. And if I change this to rjust, and let's run this again. Notice that now, for rjust, apple is on the absolute right. But the entire string created will still have a length of 20, and anything that is not apple will be padded with space. And if I change this to center, apple will simply be at the center. So here, we can actually use this to print our own tables. So let's say we have a bunch of data like this, and we simply want to print our own table. So for fruit recipe price in data, let's print fruit recipe and price first. And if we run this, we'll get this currently, which isn't very table-like. However, if we choose to use the LJUST method, we can actually create a table. So let's say it, LJUST it, and LJUST it. And note here that price is an integer, so let's convert this to a string first. And if we run this again, we'll get this table-like thing here. So here, for the first line, this string here is created from fruit.ljust8. And from pi until here, this string is created from recipe.ljust.8. So these methods can be useful if you want to create your own tables in Python. So thanks for watching, and hopefully you have learned at least one new thing about Python strings today. See you in the next one.